Hello, my name is Andrea Pavlikova and I'm International Engagement Manager with the Scottish Government and I also have a pleasure to coordinate this EU health-funded project called Shiroko Exchange. The main objective of this project is the capacity building support for integrated care. And for us, the main driver or facilitator of this support is this Shiroko Exchange tool assessing readiness for integrated care. And in today's recording, I would like to share with you a few words about how we developed the tool, what the tool is about, what are its objectives, and how it's been applied in different settings and different countries in Europe. So starting with the development of the tool. Our journey started back in 2012 with the European Innovation Partnership on Active and Healthy Aging. The main objective of this partnership was to improve healthy lives of European citizens by two years by addressing various uh, actions, as you can see on the right part of my slides, and integrated care was actually one of these areas. The main rationale or the driver behind the partnership, regardless of the action, was actually to bring different stakeholders together, collaborate, exchange good practices, and replicate these good practices in Europe so that we don't reinvent the wheel, but really scale up what works well. So it was about scaling up the existing solutions. However, when you look uh, specifically on integrated care, what we learned in this process is that integrated care is very much shaped locally. So we really need to understand the local conditions and the local context when we talk about scaling up and adoption of integrated care. We realized in that context that we are actually lacking some supportive tools and processes which help us to understand this local context. And that's how the whole work around the Nechiti model for integrated care started. We ran the interviews with 12 European regions and organizations in Europe, uh, and it was they were qualitative interviews where we tried to find out what the regions are currently doing in implementation of integrated care, what are their key success factors and also challenges, and make sure that there is mutual learning about these success factors and, and challenges. And what we learned was that regardless of the healthcare system, geographic location, or integration agenda, there are some common building blocks for integrated care, which you can find in all of these organizations. And we group them into these 12 dimensions uh, of the maturity model. In the next stage, we then kind of like thought about how we can bring this conceptual model into some sort of like user-friendly tool, which would be really driven by the users, their priorities, their needs, and it will be also validated too, so that they, it's reliable to uh, which uh, regions and organizations in Europe can use. And that's where we applied for some European funding. And as a result of these uh, two runs, or these two projects, we have developed this online self-assessment tool for integrated care. And I'll share with you a few words what the tool is about. So first of all, I would like to emphasize that this is the self-assessment tool. So the objective here is to capture stakeholders' perceptions on how they see the progress towards integrated care. And we then work with these perceptions to build some dialogues, exchange of learning, to bring all these stakeholders on the common ground when it comes to the future planning and improvement in integrated care. So we are not evaluating, we are not saying if the particular integrated care inter intervention is working well or not, but it's really all about stakeholders' perception. As I mentioned, it is an online tool, so everyone who is interested to use the tool can, use, can access the link above. It's also free to use. And as you can see, um, uh, the tool consists of 12 dimensions, so we have captured the same structure as, uh, as it was um, at, the, at the stage of the conceptual model. And when you enter the tool, you will see that each of these dimensions is defined further in terms of its objectives, but also the assessment scale. So this assessment scale gives um, the wide range of maturity one can achieve along each of the dimensions, ranging from zero to five. And when you do this assessment along each of these 12 dimensions, you will end up with this graphical visualization of your assessment, this spider diagram. And I will share with you a few words how we are actually using um, these maturity um, levels and why it's actually important to understand and capture this maturity. So first of all, first of all uh, this assessment process helps you to identify your strengths and weaknesses in integrated care. So these spider diagrams are actually very quick detection of your, uh, of your uh, building blocks for integrated care, what works well, 
and both on the other hand needs further work in order for you to move towards the full integration. Secondly, uh, the uh, tool helps you to capture stakeholders' perception experience, as I mentioned before. As you can imagine, integration of health and social care is about working across different settings in multidisciplinary teams. So each of these stakeholders participated in this process may have different perceptions on how, is, how we are currently progressing towards integrated care, but also what are the future steps. And as you can see on, the, on this slide, the tool helps you to visualize these differences. So we have used this example from Apulia Local Health of Care Authorities, where you can see how diverse is the perceptions of general director and IT specialist. And it's very important to understand the diversity of these perceptions. So the tool is participatory tool, which really engages and captures the perceptions of each individual. And why it matters for us? Uh, we are using these individual perceptions to facilitate multidisciplinary discussions and dialogue. And this is the first, a particular functionality where the Shiroko Exchange tool uh, has added the main value. So we are using the tool to uh, enable some exchange of learning and discussion among this a variety of stakeholders. As you can see on, the, uh, on this slide, on this spider diagram, the tool helps you to visualize how different stakeholders perceive the current situation. So in this case, we have four different stakeholders who provided their opinions on the progress towards integrated care. And I've, looked, I've, I've chosen the example of funding where you can see how diverse is the perception of these stakeholders. But what is important to highlight is that stakeholders are not only asked to provide quantitative measurements or quantitative perceptions like scoring zero, two, three, or five, but also to provide this qualitative information or rationale behind each of these scoring. And this actually allows you to collect a lot of qualitative uh, data, but also really generate knowledge and give some reflections on how different stakeholders um, think about particular dimension. The other uh, uh, important element why we are using this tool is to actually help uh, these stakeholders to plan the future areas uh, for um, uh, decision-making and decision planning. So the idea here is that we always have to come from the diversity to common decision and planning. So again, if you look at the example of uh, this funding, uh, the stakeholders need to, at the end of the process, uh, and uh, uh, agree on the final level of maturity. So it's uh, number two in this case, but also give a rationale why they are thinking they are scoring two and think what needs to happen, uh, what needs to be done for them to move on to the um, uh, higher, le higher level of maturity. And this is where the tool really helps to bring different stakeholders together and uh, facilitate some common planning you know, for the future decision making. And lastly, uh, the capturing level of maturity can help you also to understand how your system evolves over the time or how you're improving your maturity level. So here I use the example from the Basque Country where you can see the assessment done in 2017, the orange line, um, the orange line here provides their final agreement. And then the assessment in 2019, which actually relieved that there were a couple of dimensions where Basque Country has, um, uh, or stakeholders in the Basque Country perceived uh, some improvements. So it was innovation management, readiness to change, structure governance, digital infrastructure. But then they also had the dimensions highlighted in yellow where actually no improvement from their perspective have been reached over these two years, which really again gives very insightful inputs for the future planning. So how you can actually uh, use the tool uh, in the process of self-assessment? So all these objectives of the self-assessment process are always supported by this four-step uh, self-assessment process. So we always start with identification of stakeholders who are going to participate in this process. We always encourage each of these stakeholders to provide their individual assessment. So that's what I mentioned, it's about capturing each individual's perception. And then, in, and then in the later stage, we are bringing all these different perceptions together, share uh, these individual experiences and bring all these experiences together in order to facilitate some constructive discussions, dialogue and more importantly, common uh, sense moving forward. What I would like to highlight when it comes to the organization of the uh, self-assessment process is that this is a highly flexible process in order to be tailored to the needs and circumstances of the users. And we believe that this is for us the main uh, success factor for the Shioko Exchange tool. 
uh, there is a diversity of um, healthcare system organizations, diversity of concept of integrated care uh, in Europe. Hence, we, we cannot be really prescriptive on how this process uh, needs to look like. So we try to be uh, really flexible and try to reach different, um, uh, try to address different ambitions and skills that stakeholders um, uh, may have. However, we always suggest four key uh, elements or four key drivers when it comes to the scoping of the assessment. First of all, it's always important to agree what is the level of the assessment. So if we are going for the assessment, which is, let's say, national level, regional level, or is it a managerial level, operation level, because this really helps the stakeholders who are doing the assessment to uh, concentrate on the scope of the assessment. Secondly, as I mentioned already earlier, it's very important that stakeholders share the common understanding what they mean by integrated care, and they think about this uh, common understanding through the assessment process. Thirdly, it's very important to identify what each user wants to achieve with the assessment process. If we are interested really just to see the perception of particular stakeholder group, or we are thinking more in terms of using the tool for some future uh, planning, uh, decision making, and so on. And this is a very important element which links to the last point, uh, which is about who you need to invite in the self-assessment process. So who are your local stakeholders? We are not, again, very prescriptive in terms of what's the size of the group, but we always encourage it is a multidisciplinary team. It is a team which uh, represents people from different uh, settings, from different positions in the organizations, because this really provides the richness of information and the richness of dialogue, and also, uh, I would say, the richness of uh, information for future, for future planning. And here I just would like to illustrate some example of how uh, this assessment was done at a different level. So here you can see the diversity of ambitions and diversity of objectives of, um, of this assessment. So for instance, at the national level, we've um, done the assessment with healthcare providers where we really looked at the different size of the, uh, these healthcare providers and what they may treat. At the regional level, we looked uh, at the maturity of particular healthcare organization, as it was in case of the Basque country, or you can do it as part of the particular institution, um, or your, uh, again, like in case of Lithuania, it was primary care providers specifically. And then we'll have also some experience at the local level, where you can do the assessment of particular healthcare authorities, or what was interesting in Slovenia, it was also just at the level of municipality. Uh, so again, regardless of the objectives or the scope, each of these um, uh, localities, each of these countries follow the same uh, process and use the same tool and methodology set up, uh, set up for this process. And here you can just see the wide range of the countries and regions um, that have ex experienced um, uh, the tool, have used the tool in the real life settings. So again, just uh, I think it's a good slide to illustrate the diversity of the healthcare systems that um, use the tool so far. And I would like to um, uh, complete my presentation by sharing a few insights from the stakeholders who used the tool. So for us, capturing the experience of users is absolutely critical for the development of the tool. They always, uh, we always try to make sure that we listen to the user's needs and uh, uh, continue with the improvement and refinement of the tool as we go. Uh, and as you can see from this slide, one of the main added value of the tool was really this um, uh, functionality of being facilitative and participatory tool, who, which facilitates constructive collaborations, enables dialogue, generate knowledge, and also promotes some reflections on a particular uh, you know, system or good practice or intervention. So, Summarizing that, it kind of like really provides some insightful um, uh, inputs to the future policy planning and decision making. And as I mentioned earlier, we have also seen uh, an experience that the tool can be used at a great diversity of organizations, at various organizational and system levels, and with a wide, um, um, you know, wide group of uh, stakeholders. What is interesting, what we've seen from the experience so far, is that um, the tool has been particularly successful at a high, when the maturity assessment is done at a high organizational level. So there is a great interest to do this assessment at a, you know, from a very strategic perspective at the level of managers and decision makers, which again um, helps to basically uh, to determine these future areas of policy making. 
so just this just basically emphasized that uh, the tool really uh, you know can through the through the facilitation and participation can help us to drive this transformation towards integrated care. So thank you very much for your attention. You can find more about the project on the Shiroko Exchange website or you can contact us directly or follow us on social media. Thank you.